everyone, Dark of All Trades here. Now there is no shortage of religious content available for free on the YouTubes. It is a virtual cornucopia of arguments and preaching. However, after watching countless hours of content as well as other people's responses to these arguments and the responses to those responses, etc., I've come to realize that the majority of the content I see is the same arguments over and over. There isn't much diversity of content as one might think. This is one reason why I generally stick to addressing smaller channels. Often these people will hear what some big name has said and they try to repackage it into their own content, and by doing that they either simply parrot the argument without fully understanding it, or they will try to change the wording and somehow make the argument worse than it already was. I like to nip this idea in the bud before it becomes a bigger issue than it already is. By dealing with these bad arguments head on, with honest, full context, I hope to prevent these bad ideas from spreading. For today's video, I'm checking out another small channel called Steve Nelson. I'm guessing it's this guy's personal preaching channel, but it looks like he tries to address some common issues. However, in this video, rather than responding, he seems to take the offensive with the title, Atheist's Toughest Opponent. Since he put the singular atheist there, I'm not sure which atheist he's talking about, because from what little I've seen so far, it isn't tough for me at all. But maybe this opponent gets tougher in the second and third rounds, so let's give him a fair chance and see what we're up against. Oh, the atheist's toughest opponent. Well, that makes more sense. I'd like to talk to you today about a pretty serious topic. I'd like you not to. It doesn't matter if you're religious or not. Does anything make you feel more uncomfortable than some stranger going, I'd like to talk to you about Jesus? <laughs> yeah, I'd like you not to. <laughs> but since we've already started, we might as well keep going. You know, we have lots of different beliefs about God, but... Yeah, that is one of the problems. Each theist has a different belief from the next, with no way to verify that their God is the true God and not someone else's God. This is the argument from inconsistent revelations. People use the same source as evidence for their God, but come up with conflicting and often mutually exclusive revelations. How can I tell the difference between an actual revelation from a God and a false revelation? How can I determine whether you have actually had something revealed to you, but the next person only thinks they have, but are wrong? An excellent point for atheism, Steve. I would like to encourage you to think about just the idea, if there is no God, what are the implications? So, for example, I would say if there is no God, there's no meaning or no value or no purpose to our lives. This is an argument I've covered a couple times already, but I want to approach this from a slightly different angle. Let's presume that there is no God, even though people think there is. What actually changes here? If we don't have a purpose dictated to us, then what? I would argue that nothing changes here on Earth. We literally would not be able to tell the difference. Why is this? Because we as humans assign meaning, value, and purpose to our lives. This is also something we would do even if a god did exist. So Steve, why do we assign meaning, value, and purpose on the macro scale? I argue that any god has nothing to do with me valuing the lives of others. I have empathy. It is terribly sad that you require some being to demand that you treat others as if their lives have meaning, rather than having empathy and accepting that these people have similarities to you. You wouldn't want someone to attack you randomly, so you don't do it. Because there is no God who's created us who has some sort of plan to which we could like accomplish things or fail to accomplish things. So there is no purpose to what we're doing. We just are. We just exist. I hard disagree with this. But what exactly is the problem with just being? Why can't we exist just because we want to keep existing for as long as we can? Oh wait, I have imbued a purpose. I, a mere human, have imbued life with purpose. I must be God. So with this very simple statement, I have shown that we can have purpose if there is no God. I could give you a purpose, and that is for me to address and make content from. There, you have a purpose. You attribute purpose to YouTube as a platform to spread your message. No God was required for that. You did that. However, all of this aside, let's see what you're actually saying here. You're saying that you want some other being to give you a purpose. If you ask anyone if they could have their life planned for them from birth to death, where they don't get to make any choices at all, how do you think they would respond? You don't get to choose your career, you don't get to choose who you marry, or even if you get married, you don't get to choose whether you have children or not. Heck, just take any one of these examples. Would you want to live in a country where some higher authority chooses what job you'll have for your life? 
I argue that if any authority tried this with me, I would revolt, even if they actually knew what was best for me. So purpose is imbued by us. What we do has meaning because it affects humans. Pick an action that doesn't affect any human at all. Just name one and then determine what the purpose of that action is. I argue that you cannot designate a purpose to something that has no effect on anyone. Leave a comment below if you have an example. If there is no God, of course there's no afterlife, no heaven above us, no hell below, a linen dream world, so to speak. Good. Those concepts are grossly immoral. If there is no God, there's only your physical body, right? Um, no. There are other things that exist besides my physical body. Birds, flowers, planets, other people. However, maybe he's trying the argument that if God doesn't exist, then only physical things can exist idea. Well, as I mentioned in a previous video, there are intangible things. Do societies exist? There are concepts that we develop as thinking agents. Does someone's identity exist? This is an intangible thing that exists as a concept. Anything we can label as intangible may exist in some form or fashion, but are products of the brain. The process for that may be physical, so in that sense, maybe the physical is all that exists. But if that is the case, what would be the noticeable difference from that to what we have now? There's no soul or spirit or eternity. Really, there's not even any meaningful thought because that would be something that exists beyond your physical body. In that previous video I mentioned before, I went into the idea that, very simply, thoughts are product of physical aspects of the brain, therefore they themselves could be physical. I'm not sure why you qualified this with meaningful. Do you think that if there is only the physical body that there are still thoughts, but they aren't meaningful? Your idea of self-awareness could only mean that you're aware of your physical body because really that's all there is. Sure, if we grant that personality, actions, values, beliefs, emotions, and thoughts are all physical aspects, then yep, I agree that you have put forth one of the definitions of self-awareness. Good job. Now, what exactly is the problem with this? If there is no God, there's no morality. <sighs> this one again. I've addressed this so many times, but I'm trying to take these from a bit of a different angle. Simply because you think you get your morality from a god doesn't mean I am required to get my morality from your god. This goes right along with the argument from inconsistent revelations. You could call this the argument from inconsistent morality. Your morality differs from the next theist. Even in your own church, there will be a difference in morals. Should the LGBTQIA plus be stoned to death? One Christian church says yes, while the other says no. This is why denominations even exist, because they disagreed on things like morality. When two hydrogen atoms interact with an oxygen atom, is that good? Is that bad? I, I think we're pretty indifferent toward that, right? It's like, well, it's neither one. It's just what happens, right? Yeah, chemical reactions themselves don't have a moral value attached to them. Laws of nature don't have a moral component to them. They just are. The interaction of any two given hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom doesn't affect humans. Oh, interactions, that's another intangible thing that exists outside of the human body. In the same way as you think and live and interact with your environment, it's just interactions, right? There's, there's nothing outside of you that's driving you, so it's, it's just the way things are. This is 100% not true. Steve, be honest. Do you not know cause and effect? Do you not know natural laws exist? Do you not know that things like natural selection have led aspects that drive people to do things? Do you not know that other people can drive me to do things? Come on, Steve. You cannot be this ignorant. It's not that you're making choices. You might be arguing with me in your head. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> but if there is no God, I think we need to put such silly notions behind us. I don't know what you mean here. What silly notions are you referring to? Something not being right? External forces? What? And why should we put them behind us? These things are demonstrably relevant to humans. It would not make sense to ignore these things if we wish to continue as a species. There is no right. There is no wrong. You're not any more right than a rock is right. Is that really what you think? First of all, rocks don't have the capacity for morality. 
This is why we don't have assessments for rocks. We don't say a rock is moral or immoral. It doesn't take actions. Thinking agents take actions and therefore are subject to moral evaluation. Even tremendously subjective moral systems can still make determinations on what is right and wrong based on their own values. Your system of morality is not the only one that exists. You do know there are other people who think differently than you, right? Especially in other countries? Do you get this on... Do you know there's other countries? There are a lot of intangibles we could consider as well. You think about the idea of love. The idea that, you know, if there is no God, that, that we're this bag of biological and chemical interactions. And that somehow this bag of biological and chemical interactions has this need, this desire, that's so compelling to be loved, to be accepted by some other bag of chemistry. The brain produces emotions. The brain is the reason why humans have desires. What you are doing here is attempting to poison the well by using evocative language to try to make the idea seem ridiculous. I am not a bag of biological and chemical reactions. Well, yeah, you kind of are in the dramatically oversimplified sense. According to one article from New Scientist, quote, spindle cells, named after their long spindle-shaped bodies, are the cells that are credited with allowing us to feel love and to suffer emotionally, end quote. A link for this is in the description. You use words like somehow to show an argument from personal incredulity. What you're saying here is, I don't know how someone could want love if there is no God. Your lack of understanding does not strengthen your argument here. It just shows that you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, that is really, really wild when you think about it. And so there are a lot of intangibles like that that we need to think through. Are we just a bag of chemistry or are we something more than that? And Again, your language here is trying to poison the well, but let's grant this. What is wrong with being made up of biological and chemical components that interact with each other and themselves? Why isn't that good enough for you? Every explanation that we have shown to be true about how the human body or brain works has been 100% natural. No God needed. We don't need to be something more than that. What you're attempting here is an appeal to emotion. You wouldn't like it if we were just biological and chemical materials, so we must be more, right? And so when I look at these things, when I look at our meaning, when I, I look at the idea of a soul or spirit or us being eternal beings, or there being a heaven and a hell, right and wrong, or judgment. I just feel like there are all these different things that I just, I sense inside me that these things are real. Well, congratulations. Simply because you feel that they are real, one, does not make them real, and two, granting that they are real, it doesn't mean your explanation as to why they are real is correct. Another person can just sense inside them something different than what you do. So how do we determine which of you, if either, is correct? I just sense inside me that your God doesn't exist. Therefore, he doesn't exist, right? By your logic, this must carry weight. I sense who I am. I sense my value. You are self-aware like most humans. Again, no God is required for you to sense those things. Your internal value is based on what you put on yourself. Your value as a human is based on people giving value to human life. No sensing is required for any of this. And I'm not saying that's going to convince you that there's a God. Of course not. Look at that. We agree on something. This definitely does not convince me that there is a God, nor should it. And you clearly understand that. But you said all of it anyway. Why? Why are you wasting my time with arguments you know are not good? All I'm saying is if you're an atheist, I would encourage you to think through these things and just to be consistent in these beliefs. I'm a secular humanist and a methodological naturalist. My beliefs are pretty consistent. However, unlike with your religion, my beliefs and values are allowed to change as we get new information. So we have to say, okay, well, all these things that I sense within myself are there because God has put them there. No, we don't. We have natural explanations for pretty much all the things that you sense within yourself, as I have already explained. He created me as an eternal being, as one who needs to be loved, needs to express love. Do you think people who do not feel the need to be loved or express love are not put here by God? Aromantic people exist. Misanthropes exist. These people run counter to your description. By your logic, did your God put these qualities into those people? Again, you do know other people exist, right? Who has a sense of right and wrong. Or it could just be that 
Well, these things are all just products of natural selection, right? Yeah, pretty much right. I know this was supposed to be your ridiculous counterclaim to what you think, but as I stated before, we have perfectly valid explanations for all of what you sense your God put inside you. Even if we don't have the idea down perfectly, they are far better explanations than your God is. If one wants to say that because we don't know everything about why humans love or how they experience it, then we can't accept certain natural explanations as true or likely true, I would argue that even granting that your God exists, we have even less information about how your God did it. Just an appeal to magic. Evolution is tricking me into thinking all these things are real so that, so that what? Evolution isn't tricking anyone. It is a process of changes in gene expressions in a population over time. But you really aren't that far off. How did religions develop that aren't yours? How did religions develop before yours? Do you think everyone else is being tricked? Probably. Humans are pattern-seeking machines, so much so that we find patterns where there are not. Examples of pareidolia, or the recognition of objects or patterns where there are none, are abundant, as are its cousin, apophenia, which is the tendency to see connections in unrelated things. So connecting the existence of an emotion to a supernatural being is not surprising and may, in some fashion, be an effect of evolution. So that I'll live, I'll live long enough to reproduce, I guess. That seems to be the big goal. So I don't expect this to convince you, I just want to challenge you. Well, this isn't much of a challenge for anyone who has thought about these topics and put forth meaningful research into understanding what it means to be moral, have value, be self-aware, or experience an emotion. What you're doing is adding something, in this case your God, to the natural world in order to explain something you don't think we understand. You're trying to solve a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. Maybe this would be a challenge to people who haven't investigated these concepts. People who sit in church pews tend to not look into the Bible. They just listen to the good parts and accept the rest, typically uncritically. This is why atheists, on the whole, know more about the Bible than Christians do. Consider these things, these things that are within you. I think you should be your own toughest opponent. Be oh, I get it now. He's intentionally putting forth bad arguments and reasoning because he wants atheists to think about these ideas more. He's trying to say that we should always be challenging our own beliefs and opinions and constantly evaluating and changing with new evidence. Did... did he end the video on a note of agreement? Is this actually going to be a good message? Because there are things in you that you know about yourself, that you believe about yourself, and you just have to decide, did these things come from God or did they just come from nature? Let me know your thoughts. These things come from nature. And that's the end of his video, though we are sent off with some Bible verses from Ecclesiastes, Acts, and the ever-classic John 3.16. Well, Steve, your last question is a bit silly, right? You know that, right? You get that, right? You get that, right? Right? You get that. Right? Right? You get that, right? Atheists don't believe your God exists, therefore cannot be the cause of something. Due to this, atheists would not say that anything in the natural world, including feelings, came from any God, let alone your God. Of course, that doesn't mean they necessarily think things like emotions came from nature. Maybe they think their ancestors' spirits guide them and cause them to experience things like morality and a sense of self-worth. Maybe they think the vibrations of crystals cause emotions. There are a number of other options you just haven't justified ruling out. However, until you show the supernatural exists, you cannot justifiably attribute something to any supernatural entity. That's it for this one. What did you think? Do you think we get our self-awareness from nature? Or do you think it comes from something beyond the material world? Let me know in the comments below. The attribution of natural aspects of human existence that we may not understand perfectly to a god is a rather common trope of the apologist, though I am thoroughly pleased that he ended with a positive message, if potentially unintentionally. Are you your own toughest opponent, or is the like button your toughest opponent? Prove it by hitting that button and overcoming that challenge. If you'd like to continuously adjust your beliefs when you receive new good information, hit subscribe and let that sweet, sweet information come to you. If you're impressed by my ability to listen and critically address bad arguments, even if they're made with good intentions, consider supporting my endeavors at patreon.com backslash darkofalltrades. Patreon levels start at a dollar a month and everything helps. As always, keep learning.